This is the Music History Today podcast for July 18th. On today's show, someone gets to 1 million likes on Facebook, Def Leppard debuts, and Lollapalooza begins. First up, though, on this date in 1933, Broadway singer Hannah Williams married boxing champion Jack Dempsey. In 1953, Elvis Presley walked into Sun Records Studios in Memphis, Tennessee, and recorded the songs That's When Your Heartaches Begin and My Happiness as gifts for his mother, who was having a birthday. A couple of weeks later, studio owner Sam Phillips asked Elvis to come back to the studio to record some more, and the rest, of course, is history. In 1972, the entire Sly and the Family Stone band was arrested for drug possession after police searched their tour bus during a traffic stop. In 1974, John Lennon was denied a renewal of his U.S. visa because he had a drug conviction in London back in the 1960s. He eventually got his United States visa. In 1976, country music singer Tammy Wynette married real estate mogul Michael Tomlin. In 1978, Def Leppard played their first gig. It was in Sheffield, England, and we discuss more about this gig and their amazing career on our Music History In-Depth podcast, which is on this network that you are listening to right now. The episode has already dropped, actually, by the time you're hearing this. Please like and subscribe, as they say. It helps the algorithm. Anyway, enough plugging. In 1983, Simon and Garfunkel began their 19th City Reunion Tour. In 1988, Ike Turner was sentenced to one year in prison for having crack cocaine in his car during a traffic stop. In 1991, the first Lollapalooza Music Festival began. Among the acts playing the festival were Living Color, Nine Inch Nails, and Jane's Addiction, whose Perry Farrell was one of the main organizers of the Lollapalooza Festival. In 1992, the second Lollapalooza Music Festival started. Also in 1992, Whitney Houston married Bobby Brown. In 1993, during their set at the Lollapalooza Music Festival, Rage Against the Machine protested against censorship against music by walking around nude on stage except for duct tape over their mouths and they refused to play. In 1994, Dolores O'Riordan of the Cranberries married her husband, Don Burton. In 2008, Billy Joel played the final concert at Shea Stadium in New York City as the stadium would be demolished soon thereafter. Paul McCartney, Roger Daltrey of The Who, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, and Garth Brooks all performed during that concert with Billy. In 2011, the Justin Timberlake movie Friends with Benefits premiered. In 2014, one celebrity became the first person to get to 1 million likes on Facebook. And it wasn't even a Kardashian, wasn't Bieber, wasn't even Riri, it was Shakira. In 2018, Billy Joel played his 100th concert at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Also in 2018, Cliff Richard won his defamation of character and slander case against the BBC after the BBC claimed that Richard was being investigated for child sexual assault when he wasn't even being investigated. In classical music in 1948, the operetta Marinka opened on Broadway. In theater in 1970, the musical Boyfriend closed on Broadway. Albums that were released on July 18th include in 1960 when Miles Davis released Sketches of Spain. In 1961, Judy Garland released Judy at Carnegie Hall. In 1964, The Ventures released The Fabulous Ventures. In 1966, The Birds released Fifth Dimension. In 1968, The Grateful Dead released Anthem of the Sun. In 1969, The Doors released The Soft Parade. In 1973, Al Green released Call Me. In 1980, Joy Division released their final album, Closer, after lead singer Ian Curtis committed suicide a couple months out before the release. The rest of the band went on to form the group New Order. 
In 1980, same day, Echo and the Bunnymen released Crocodiles and Willie Nelson released Honeysuckle Rose. In 1983, Rick Springfield released Living in Oz. And on that same day, Paul Young released No Parley. In 1986, Run DMC released Raising Hell, their groundbreaking album. In 1988, Vinnie Moore released Time Odyssey. In 1994, At the Gates released Terminal Spirit Disease. In 1995, Procol Harum released A Long Goodbye. Blondie released Remixed, Remade, Remodeled, The Remix Project. And The Ramones released Adios Amigos. In 1999, American Head Charge released Trepanation. In 2000, Soul Junk released 1956. Big Mo released City of Syrup. And the casualties released Stay Out of Order. In 2002, Oakenfold released Bunka. In 2005, The Human League released Live at the Dome. And in 2006, Los Lonely Boys released Sacred. Singles that were released in the UK on July 18th include in 1975 when David Bowie released Fame. In 1980, The Talking Heads released Cities. And in 1981, Soft Cell released Tainted Love. Meanwhile, in America, in 1960, the Ventures released Walk, Don't Run. In 1966, Simon and Garfunkel did a twofer. They released The Dangling Conversation and Bright Green Pleasure Machine. Also on that exact same day, 1966, the Beach Boys did a twofer. They released God Only Knows and Wouldn't It Be Nice. In 1975, The Carpenters released Solitaire. In 1984, Prince and the Revolution released Let's Go Crazy off the Purple Rain soundtrack. In 1988, The Beach Boys released Kokomo. In 1994, Seal released Kiss from a Rose. And Hootie and the Blowfish released Hold My Hand. And in 2000, Pearl Jam released Light Years. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast, where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame, or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on July 18th include rapper M.I.A., former Virgin Records owner and owner of a whole lot of other things, Sir Richard Branson. Martha Reeves of Martha and the Vandellas, Screamin' Jay Hawkins, country music singer Lonnie Mack, singer Dion of Dion and the Belmonts, actress Harriet Nelson of Ozzy and Harriet, the TV show. Also, she was the mother of Rick Nelson, the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. Singer Ryan Cabrera, Tony Faginson of Eve Six, Darren Malakian of System of a Down, Jack Irons of Pearl Jam, and also the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nigel Twist of The Alarm, Keith Levine of The Clash, Terry Chambers of XTC, country music singer Ricky Skaggs, Glenn Hughes of The Village People, Wally Bryson of The Raspberries, Phil Harris of Ace, Cesar Zuderick of Golden Earring, Tim Lynch of The Flaming Groovies, Danny McCullough of The Animals, Robin McDonald of Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, Brian Auger of Steam Packet, and also the Mahavishnu Orchestra, Ian Stewart of the Rolling Stones, Johnny Fungs of the Dells, Papa D. Allen of War, jazz pianist Fingers Carr, singer Bobby Sherman, Jim Queskin of the Jim Queskin Jug Band, drummer Roger Sellers of Nucleus, singer-songwriter Frank Farian, musician Lynn Seaton, singer Gruff Reese of Super Furry Animals, singer and pianist Karina Passion, singer Henri Salvador, opera singer Pauline Garcia Viado, composer Giovanni Bonancini. 
Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 18th include composer Jacob Handel, who passed away in 1591 at the age of 40. Organist Johann Krieger passed away in 1735 at the age of 83. Composer Thomas Greatorex passed away in 1831 at the age of 72. Organist Emil Hartmann passed away in 1898 at the age of 62. Cellist Alfredo Piatti passed away in 1901 at the age of 79. Organist John White passed away in 1902 at the age of 47. The composer of the Mexican National Anthem, Jaime Nuno, passed away in 1908 at the age of 83. Organist George Marshall Hall passed away in 1915 at the age of 53. Composer Witold Malazuski passed away in 1939 at the age of 65. Composer Vitislav Novak passed away in 1949 at the age of 78. Composer and conductor of the Georgian State Orchestra from 1952 to 1965, Shalva Taktakashvili passed away in 1965 at the age of 64. Singer and guitarist Bobby Fuller was found dead in his car in 1966 at the age of 23. Composer Germain Galinin passed away in 1966 at the age of 44. Composer Federico Gysi passed away in 1975 at the age of 74. Singer Lionel Daunais passed away in 1982 at the age of 80. Composer Jorge Santos passed away from a stroke in 1988 at the age of 64. Singer Nico of the group The Velvet Underground passed away in a bicycle accident in 1988 at the age of 43. Singer Jerry Bollet of Offenbach passed away from cancer in 1990 at the age of 44. Singer-songwriter Mimi Farina passed away in 2001 at the age of 56. Opera singer Jerry Hadley passed away from a brain injury in 2007 at the age of 55. Composer Tauno Martinen passed away in 2008 at the age of 95. Composer Osvaldo Lacerda passed away in 2011 at the age of 84. Songwriter and record producer Buddy Bu passed away in 2015 at the age of 74. Composer and historian Wolfgang Huffschmidt passed away in 2018 at the age of 84. And composer Hans Joachim Hespos passed away in 2022 at the age of 84. Next time on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 19th, when in 1985, Joan Jett becomes Mike Tyson's good luck charm. Thank you very, very much for listening, if you're listening on the podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jamaritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.